New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.
we would throw it this uh, uh, January the first, two thousand nineteen, and we see this thing. Yes, but yes. you've been good to us. Yes. Yes. All our ups and all our downs, yes, Father God, Lord. you have been there for us. Oh, Father God, and <coughs> now all our bad days, our Jesus. good days outweigh our good days, Jesus. our bad times. So we just want to pray and give you this thing. Thank you, Father God, for how you, not only how you thank kept you, me, but how you have kept you. my family, my yes. friends, my, uh, my children, my grandchildren, you. your children, your yes. grandchildren. Father God, you have been good to us all. Yes. So, Father God, we're not taking a life of this one. We're not yes. thinking that we yes. owe ourselves anything. But, Father God, we come just to give you the glory and give you yes. the praise. Now, Father God, while we're in this service this morning, we ask you, Father God, let your spirit come in this place. Yes. And let it do what it wants to do. Yes, do it the way it wants to. Let yes. have a way. Oh, Father God, we ask you to let everyone on the sound yes. our voice. Yes. Though that, uh, uh, even though they desire to be here and can't be here. Yes. Oh, Father God, we plan that this be a blessed year for all of us. Yes. Yes. A year of prosperity for yes. us. This be a year that we will let doctor off this year. Oh, Father God, we know you are God that can, you God that will do it. Yes. So, Father yes. God, we give you the praise, we give you the glory. We're not trusting no government, Father Jesus, God, no Jesus. political leader, Father God, but in you, God, yes, in your word, you said, upon your show, the government should rest upon your show, yes, and not against ours. So, Father God, we praise you, we give you the glory. It is in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I trust you, I'm sure, in an open time, you, as God has been good to all of us, you may have a word that you want to say for the Lord at this time. Same prayer, whatever you want to do, it's open for you at this time. <laughs> well, I'm standing out I thank you God for what he has done for me. Uh, I can truly say this year, last year I went sick like I was a year before last and the year before then. And then we're going to start praying. And I thank God for all what he has done for, for me, my family. I just get in the prayer and I ask you that know the word prayer. Continue to pray for me and continue to pray for my family. Amen. Amen. I give up to God and thank God for bringing me over to a new year. Amen. Because I knew it wasn't nobody but him. Amen. Amen. Through the illness and sickness I went through last year, he brought me through. Amen. And I thank you. And I ask each and every one of you continue to pray for me. And I pray for you. Thank you. Amen. 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 I just want to thank God for bringing us to 2020. I thank God for life, health, and strength. And I thank God for everybody. And I ask God to keep on blessing us all together. He bless us one by one. I just thank the Lord for everything and call He is everything to us. Amen. I know God has been good to all of us. We're not going to make him much. We're just coming in. I know one thing. We all can. And, and, and we can stand. And we all can stand and give God a high praise. We all can hear that because we want to be. Because of God. It's just good to be here. It's just good to be here. Amen. And this time we can turn on to the top Amen, amen. amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. New Year, first Sunday of a new year. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yeah. Because it could have been the other way. Yeah. We mark time by days, weeks, months, and years. But this is a continuation of our yes. life. Yes. And this is an opportunity for us to continue to to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. And if there's something that we need to improve upon, we take this opportunity to say a new year, a new opportunity. Yes. But we're still thankful that God is still on the throne. Amen. 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 I'm just delighted to see each of you this morning. And we're so delighted to have uh, all of our visitors and friends with us this morning. We thank God for you. We're going to proceed forward. Uh, we first want to thank uh, Mother Barnes and Deacon May for the devotional period. Amen. And this time we're going to have our announcement uh, by Sister Olivia Edwards. 
Savior Jesus Christ, to Pastor Lewis, to Minister Howard, to our uh, absent um, Minister Knight, to our mothers, to our deacons, and to all of you saints and friends. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Our announcements. I do have a booklet here from Edgecombe Community College, the spring semester of 2020. They have a career training, continuing education, and lifelong learning. I guess if you want to know more, it's booklet right here. We also want to um, announce that um, Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Building Fund Service, which is Saturday, January the 18th at 10 a.m., right here at Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Please be here to support our building fund. Amen. Now for Anderson Chapel's other announcements, our upcoming events. The Black History Program will be Sunday, February 16, 2020 at 11 a.m. Trustee Nancy Wooten will deliver the message for the occasion. You may begin paying your church anniversary assessment as early as today. I'll $17. Reverend Dr. Margaret Knight, Church Anniversary Chairperson. We encourage every member of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church to support and attend all or as many church functions as possible. We are all one body in Christ, and we all need to see another body working together to keep the body strong and productive. Please remember our sick and shut-in shut -in members, and our pastor's vision statement is, I believe that all people matter to God and that Christ's message and ministry through the local church is the hope of the world. Reverend Malcolm E. Lewis, our thought for the week. Why work? So, why, okay, why work so hard to fit in when you were called to be set apart? Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Second Corinthians six and seventeen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Evans, for those notes and announcements. We hope and pray that everyone had the first day of the announcements will take new those and respond in a positive manner. We just want to uh, share with you. Uh, Few things we are delighted uh, that the Lord has blessed us to arrive into a new year. Amen. The year of 2020. Amen. 2020 uh, in the doctor's office is our doctor's office is perfect vision. Mm -hmm. So 2020 this year we need to let us work on perfecting our vision. Amen. Amen. You know, we may not be perfect, but let us strive to be better in our lives. Amen. Matthew 5 and 48 says, Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, Amen. is perfect. Amen. So let us strive in 2020 to be better. Let us strive in 2020 to do better. Let us strive in 2020 to be who the Lord has called us to be. Amen. 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 Let us strive in 2020 to love better. <coughs> let us love one another. Jesus. You know, let us put aside some of this malice and hatred that the world seemed to all, uh, uh, grab hold of. But let us be God's people. Amen. For Jesus is love. Amen. 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 And also, just remind you, um, this is a this is just, just a public service uh, announcement for you, particularly when you're signing your legal documents this year or any document. You know, you're like me, you have a tendency, you just use the last two digits of the year. Uh, this year in 2020, uh, when you sign that document, <coughs> don't just put 20 on it, but be sure to put 2020. Amen. 
because there are some very unscrupulous people out there who would take advantage of you and who could go back and add uh, 17 behind it, uh, 18 or 19, and say that this has been in effect ever since 2016. And you know that you didn't, but you don't have anything else to prove against it. So just, uh, just be sure to take heed, take warning as you sign your legal documents, sign them 2020. Not just a 20. Amen. Amen. Again, we're delighted to be here in the house of the Lord one more time to thank you, God, for our choir this morning, Brother Amen. 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 New Year 2020. Amen. We're thankful for our ushers this morning. Amen. 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 I saw more than one there earlier. Those two women right now. They're here. Get them a hand. Amen. 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 We thank God for our, our ministers. Get them a hand. Amen. Amen. Our teachers, give them a hand. Our mothers, give them a hand. Amen. Our trustees, give them a hand. Our videographers, give them a hand. Amen. Give yourself a hand. Amen. Because truly this is the first Sunday of 2020, but this is the day which the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rise to our feet as the choir shall give us the opening selection.
Suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. 
The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I read the entire Psalms 121. I know it's sufficient because it's the word of God. Amen. 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 Lord, we come to you just as humble as we know how, God. God, we want to tell you thank you, God, for allowing us to see another year, God. For that, God, we just want to say thank you, God. God, we ask you, God, to just touch us, touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our souls, God. That anything that can hinder us, God, that be removed so we can receive what you have for us on today, God. God, this year is 2020, God. We should come in with a clear vision of what you have for us, God. But, God, we have to do some work as well, God. God, we ask you, God, to give us the strength to do what you need us to do, God. God, we ask you, God, to order our steps, God, so we can do just that, God. For that, God, we just want to tell you thank you, God. God, we thank you, God, for life, health, and strength, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. I didn't make it here for the announcements, and I apologize for that. I do honor God for my being here, my pastor, Brother Lewis, Minister Howard, any other ministers in the building, mothers, deacons, saints, and friends. I just want to say to you that this year we do have calendars. If you see a mistake in the calendar, please let me know. If you are scheduled to do something that you are not comfortable with doing, please let me know. Um, if there uh, is anything that if anybody didn't get a calendar, please let me know. But we are just thankful. It's, it's probably up there. It's way. <laughs> but anyway, just want you to know that the calendars are available. You have been designated to do things throughout the year. But if you look through the calendar and you see something that makes you uncomfortable, just let me know and we will make adjustments accordingly. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Knight. And, uh, uh, to kind of echo something uh, Trustee Newton said this morning in Sunday school, she said that, uh, you know, if there is a problem, talk to one another. Amen. Because, uh, Dr. Knight said, if you have an issue or a problem or something that you're scheduled to do, please uh, get with her and we can make adjustments. Communication is a good Communication, you never, you never know. And, uh, I told my wife something the other day, she's, uh, she, she didn't like what I told her particularly. I said, well, I thought y'all was going to tell the truth. <laughs> you know, they want to, they want the truth. <laughs> oh, it was, it was staying nice now, boy. But anyway, God bless you. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, proceed forward and uh, with our church covenant. Uh, Dr. Knight is going to come and lead us in our church covenant. Yeah. Following the covenant, we will have our Black History Moment by Mother Johnson. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Protocol already being established. Um, would you please stand for the reading of our church covenant? This is an agreement between Anderson Chapel and those who choose to fellowship and unite here. But if there's something similar at your church and you don't mind joining in with us, please stand and recite the church covenant with us. This may not be something, we may not be complying to every point in this covenant, but we are striving every day to reach perfection. By what common experience do we enter into spiritual fellowship and covenant relations with one another? We believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. What is our bond of union with one another? We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love. What are our privileges and duties in this church? To, to strive for the advancement of this church in the knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine. What vows do we gladly make as stewards of what God entrusts to us? To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. What gracious task do we humbly assume? We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. To what manner of life and conversation are we solemnly pledged? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, Faithful in our engagements and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tapping, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicated drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Since one is our master, even Christ, and we are all brethren, by what eternal ministries are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teaching of our Lord and Savior? We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, 
to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. What is our agreement when we move from this community? We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Always at the first of the first Sunday of service in the year, we present to the church the officers. Uh, uh, so we will do that at this time. And first, I call for the Reverend Malcolm E. Lewis, who is our pastor. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pray in love to God. That's the way. That's the stuff. We have a market night. <laughs> Minister Howard. <laughs> Saints, friends, family. Um, I came before you to bring our Black History Moment and wanted to preface that with a saying that um, everybody has a moment in history. Everybody makes an imprint in the sand. We have our own garden here at Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. There are several people that are with us and that have gone on before us that have made a deep imprint, footprint, in our church. And I wanted to look back for about 11 years, back to December the 13th, 2008. <coughs> When we recognize that the seniors in our lives had made a, a definite impact upon us, that they had left us with something, either the song that was inspirational or a statement that could be uh, something that we could use to go forward with in life. And I wanted to, to let us go back and look at the senior citizens of Anderson Chapel Church from December of 2008, and it was called Steps to Salvation. Our first senior that we recognized in 2008 was our very own trustee, Charlie Mac Weaver. He died November the 28th, 2008, <coughs> just before we could print this um, book or have our service in memory of the senior citizens. And this is Trustee Charlie Mack Weaver. You know, when um, you step down in the dirt and you make that imprint, some sand falls in. And some sand gets down there underneath that footprint. And that footprint is a part of you. So when sometimes after that footprint is made, we got little shrubs, <coughs> little seeds, little trees that come up. So if I call out the name of somebody, and you could have been in that footprint, or you could be a sand, or a grain of sand from that footprint, I ask that you stand. Next was Brother Billy Gray Barnes. He was the spouse of Sister Nora Lee Barnes. His words of wisdom was, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Brother Billy Ray Barnes. Next was our very own sister Nora Lee Barnes. Her, her song that she loved was Amazing Grace, and her words of wisdom to anyone is spare the rod and spoil the child. <laughs> then we had our very own Reverend Walter Cherry Jr. And um, his words of wisdom was, the steps of a good man are ordered by God. Then no other than our very own mother, Dorothy Dupree. 
her words of wisdom, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. And her favorite song is, I'm still here. Amen. All right. <laughs> then we had Sister Ethel Fields, and her song was, God's Got My Back. Sister Ethel Fields. Then we had um, Mother Naomi Jenkins, and her words of wisdom was, if you would just watch, listen, and pay attention, you will learn what you are to do. Amen. Mother Jenkins. Then we had Sister Martha May. She, um, her favorite song was, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. Amen. And... Yes. <laughs> okay. Sister Martha May. And I think she got some little, little brains out here. <laughs> Deacon Simon Pender. Um, Deacon Pender from Pine Tops is known for his saying of, it won't work, children. It won't work. <laughs> Deacon Simon Pender. Pender. Then we had Sister Mary Ford. She was known for her song, Precious Lord, and she states that she really likes God's Got My Back. And her word of wisdom to her family and friends is, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Sister Mary Porter. Then we had Sister Maggie Mae Staten. She has no special song but loves many songs that praise God. Her words of wisdom would be, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Amen. Sister Maggie Mae Satan. <laughs> <laughs> then we had Sister Tilly Taylor. Her favorite song, which she sings so emphatically, is don't call the road. <laughs> Sister Taylor's words of wisdom are, keep looking up to where all your help comes from. Look to the Lord. Amen. Sister Taylor. Amen. <laughs> and then we had Mother Bertha Weaver. Uh, her favorite song was, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross by Lee Williams. And um, her words... Her words of wisdom were, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Mother Bertha Weaver. Amen. Then we had Brother Willie Williams, and his words of Williams, wisdom was, look to the man upstairs. <laughs> Brother Willie Williams. Mother Eva Wooten, her favorite song was, Walk With Me, Lord. Her words of wisdom was, always keep God first and let God fight your battles. Obey your parents. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord giveth thee. And most of all, let God work it out. Um, Mother Eva Wooten. Brother Hardy Dennis Wooten. He had um, he had no special song, but he liked all gospel music. And his words of wisdom were, "The Lord is my rock and shield." Brother Hardy Dennis Wooten. Then we had our very own Deacon James <coughs> Wooten. His favorite song is, or was, "What more can I do?" His words of wisdom. You can go slow. You can go some more. You go fast. You won't last. Deacon James Wooten. He's talking about my father. Sister Lottie Wooten. Her favorite song was Too Close to the Mirror. And her words of wisdom is treat everyone nice as you never know who would have to take care of you 
and give you your last glass of water. That's true too now. Sister, <laughs> <Lottie Lottie. laughs> I'll pass all you want to. Yes. <laughs> <Lottie Lottie. laughs> And then our last one was Trusty Willie Wooten. Um, his favorite song was I Won't Complain. Amen. And his words of wisdom was God is a good God. Yes, he is. Dreams. I've dreamed many dreams that never came true. <coughs> I've seen them vanish at dawn. But I've realized enough of my dreams, thank the Lord, to make me want to dream on. I prayed many prayers when no answer came, though I've waited patient and long. But answers have come to enough of my prayers to make me keep praying on. I've trusted many a friend that failed and left me to weep alone. But I found enough of my friends that are really true that will make me keep trusting on. I've sown many seeds that have fallen by the way for the birds to feed upon, but I've held enough golden sheaves in my hand to make me keep sowing on. I've drunk from the cup of disappointment and pain. I've gone many days without song, but I've sipped enough nectar from the roses of life to make me keep living on. Amen. 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 Beautiful, beautiful Black History Moment. Amen. Um, I just love when we talk about our seniors and celebrate our seniors because they mean so much. It took me many, many years, but I have decided that Deacon James Wooden is one of the wisest men I know. Amen. Right? Because his words go slow, mm -hmm. and you can go some more. <laughs> Go fast, you won't laugh. It took me a while to learn, and it took me some experience. But I want y'all to know I'm slowing down because I intend to laugh. But I thank God for those so many words of wisdom that came from our family. You know, sometimes it may not be the job you do. It may not be the work that's written on the wall or played on television, but that one word that you spoke that made a difference in somebody's life, that, that life you lived that was the example for others to follow. Mm -hmm. I thank God for our seniors. Thank you, Mother Johnson, for that beautiful, beautiful Black History Moment. Yes. Thank God for our seniors. Amen. That's the foundation upon which we stand. Jesus is the cornerstone. But he sent those seniors to help us along the way and to show us the way. Yes. Sometimes they showed us good things, and sometimes they showed us the bad. <coughs> and they wanted us to see and learn that even if it's bad, that they show what you learn from. Amen. Learn not to follow the bad things. At this time, we'll proceed with the recognition of our officers of presentation. Uh, Reverend Malcolm E. Lewis, who is our pastor. And because when God joins uh, a man and a woman, they become one flesh. And I know she's going to be recognized a little later, but I do think his wife, a lot of people don't like the term first lady, but um, she is his first, his last, his only. Uh, Mother Lois Lewis is going to ask her to come and stand with the pastor because they work as a team. Amen. Because uh, even with the job that he does, we may see him in the front. But she is behind praying Amen. and encouraging him Amen. as he goes forth. Uh, next will be yours truly, Dr. Margaret Knight. And I thank God for what he's done in my life. And we also have Minister Vanita Howard. Amen. Amen. Yes. Minister Howard is a great help. She even stood in when the pastor was in his accident and, and she and she did a beautiful job, I understand. And so sometimes you gotta be also ready. Amen. But you never know when the Lord may call. Amen. And we've got some great deacons here at Anderson Chapel. Sometimes to us they we feel like they move a little slow, but they remember the words of Deacon Wooten better than we do. <laughs> go slow and go slow. <laughs> 
So we're going to recognize Deacon James L. Knight Sr., which is our chairperson Amen. of the Deacon's Ministry and the treasurer of the church. Amen. Deacon James Knight. Deacon Willie May is our vice chair. He's not with us today. Um, Deacon J.W. May, his brother, you look at his brother, you'll see him. Amen. Take <laughs> the fast between the fact I thought Che and Ray, they were twins. <laughs> Deacon David Ritz, who recently retired, so Amen. he's going to be on the ball in the church and in the community. <laughs> One who serves with joy. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon Ritz. Good morning. Our Mother Norley Barnes, Amen. who is the president of the Mother's Ministry. She is a loving person, and she doesn't mind standing in when she needs to. Uh, she makes sure everything is, is okay. She was hesitant at taking this position, but then she thought of her mother, and, and she said, I feel like my mother sitting there. So, Amen. Mother Norley Vaughn, Mother Dorothy Dupree, Amen. who is a staple in the church. I mean, she's always present, always giving her very, very best, no matter how she feels. She shows up and she supports the program Amen. and does whatever she can to make it better. Amen. Mother Frances Dupree, a vice president of the Mother's Ministry and an inspiration to all. Just the life and the energy that she has inspires so many of us. We are so proud of the work that she does. And she is a great student of the Word. <coughs> Mother Nebraska Dupree, who's not with us today, but Mother Nebraska Dupree is a strong power. She <coughs> labors to make sure that this church is presentable and ready for service. Her work is done behind the scenes, but if her work isn't done, sometimes the work that's put before you won't be as effective. So thank God for Mother Nebraska Dupree. Mother Naomi Jenkins, the one who set the example for most of us, our honorary mother, who is 100 years old and who resides in Greensboro uh, under the care of her daughter. And uh, we just thank God for her. Mother Martha Johnson, secretary of the um, that's a mistake, I'm sorry. But Mother Martha Johnson, who is a faithful mother, who uh, does excellent presentations. Uh, she's an excellent teacher. She's the president of the choir and a great support to the Anderson Chapel Church. Mother Christine Jones is the secretary of the Mother's Ministry. And she has just got that sweet smile that inspires others. I don't care what kind of day you have, when she comes in your presence, she gives you that hug and that sweet hello. And let you, somehow another her voice just lets you know that everything's going to be all right. Mother Christine Jones, and we've already presented Mother Lewis to stand with her husband. Our trustee Patrick Pender, who is our chairperson of the trustees ministry. He is a great support. Um, he's probably uh, serving at a funeral today. He works with William Funeral Home. But he serves his church. He's faithful. And he's determined that this church will continue and stand as it always has. He is such a great support. Trustee Ella Barnes Pitt, who is our faithful financial secretary of the church. Um, and I don't care, whatever you need done, Trustee Pitt is willing to jump in and do her part. She doesn't have to be ahead. She doesn't mind serving in the background, but she will do whatever needs to be done to make the work of this church go forward. Trustee Francine Dupree, she works with our youth. We don't have as many youth as we had in the past, but I can tell you what, she works with them today, even with one or two, as though she had a room full. Because she believes, even if it's one, they deserve the very best. She does some of the greatest projects with our youth and encourages them. And I just thank God for this young lady. She is a big help in all the work of the church. Amen. Trustee Nancy Wooten, our faithful Sunday school teacher. She says I pushed her into it, but she does a great job and she smiles the entire time she's doing it. So I think she truly loves it. But she's determined to be prepared and do whatever God calls her to do. She will also be uh, 
the speaker for our Black History program. She will bring the word on third Sunday in February. So come back and hear her faithfully. You said if we weren't comfortable to see you. <laughs> you and I have already talked. <laughs> Finally, our Secretary of Staff, Trustee Ella Barnes Pitt, who's standing before you, uh, Trustee uh, Nancy Wooten, also standing before you, and the assistant to both of these women, Sister Minnie Johnson, um, Assistant Reporting and Financial Secretary, one who don't mind setting things straight. <laughs> she uh, attends most everything that happens at the church, and she's a great support. And uh, she does whatever she can to make the church a success. But um, if things don't go good, she will let you know. Amen. And <laughs> <laughs> newly appointed is our publicity officer and, and um, historian that works along with our trustee, Ella Barnes Pitt, and that's our brother, Camilla Stancy II. And he records our services. He's putting them out on the... Uh, Worldwide web. Uh, I'm gonna try to do something different. I'm gonna try to go live when he uh, so when he preach. He's really doing things to get the word out to let people know that Anderson Chapel is here, and uh, he's gonna start advertising the programs. He's gonna try to start encouraging people to visit. But he and Trustee Pitt helps us to remember where God has brought us from through maintaining the history of this church through reporting, pictures, writings and advertising to make sure we continue to move forward. So we thank God for all the officers of this great church. Now, just because these are presented as officers doesn't mean that they are the only ones that work in the church. This entire body, this entire congregation works faithfully in whatever capacity to make sure Anderson Chapel is successful, to make sure Anderson Chapel carries the word, to make sure that the vision of our pastor is carried out as for as well as the vision of the Lord. And our pastor's vision statement, I believe that all people matter to God, and that Christ's message and ministry through the local church is the hope of the world. Carrying out the Great Commission is basically what is summarizing. And so we just thank God for everyone who works in the church, and we just ask that you continue to support them and pray for them and encourage them as they go along the way. Sometimes it may not look like things are going forth to you, but you remember, it takes time to get things accomplished. There is a process. And so we recognize if we go slow, we can go some more. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask our um, faithful, faithful visitor and friend, Deacon Charles, to <coughs> come and pray for the officers of the church. Deacon Paul. Let us all pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day and for another year, the beginning of the year, for bringing us thus far into this day. We thank you, Father, for all your servants who are standing before us right now. We pray for them, Father, that they will continue to do your work in our will, Lord. So, Father, it's been said here today that um, it's not only what we do, but what we say mm -hmm. to make a difference. It does. And we need to be reminded of it that the kind words go a long way. Yes. And we thank you for all of these people. We know these people and we praise you for these people. We uplift them and we ask the church to continue to pray for them. Yes. And uplift them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Knight, for presiding over that, and thank you, Tom, for prayer. I want to remind you again, uh, let's not forget the building fund program uh, on January the 18th at 10 a.m. Come out and support the program on that day and support uh, Anderson Chapel and encourage those neighbors, friends, and uh, family members to come and attend with us on that day. Also, want to uh, 
just uh, noticed in your bulletin it has uh, the deacons meeting and it has in there uh, times to be announced or uh, to be scheduled as needed at least on all those lines. But uh, we just want to let you know the next deacons meeting is February the 25th uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, so the church body will know that the deacons are meeting it. And the time is February 25th at 5 p.m. Amen. Amen. Um, I didn't say to make the announcement because I didn't know that in my book. But I do have extra flyers. Um, so if you all can help pass them out. Amen. Amen. Let us help get the word out. Amen. Get the word out. And we thank uh, Brother Dancy for his uh, help and uh getting the word out through the uh, Facebook and uh, other uh, social media platforms and uh, individual. I sent uh, I sent uh, uh, a text message to one of my co-workers and when he got back to me, he said, I know those people. <laughs> he said, I want to come. So, yeah. Uh, if we get the word out, communication again. Communication is always Amen. Amen. Again, we thank each of you for what you continue to do uh, for the year of 2019. We definitely want to thank you uh, for your giving and support that you've given to Anderson Chapel and to all the programs of the church. Uh, without you, we could not do what we do, and even on the small scale or the grand scale. And without you, we cannot grow. We cannot go forward. You know that we have been talking about the uh, building program, so let us focus on 2020 and doing the best we can to give for the building program, give for missionary, give for the day-to-day -day expense of the church. Amen. At this time, we're going to uh, give way to the trustees and the ushers as they shall come, as we shall continue in worship and giving. Amen. <coughs>
Amen. Again, we thank you for your gift that you're giving. We thank God for his grace and mercy in our lives and all that he continues to do for us. God is good and it's great to be praised. <coughs> we talk about 2020 and we realize that God has brought us through another year. <coughs> Just the fact that he brought us through another year, somebody ought to say, Lord, I thank you. Reminded of sitting at work the other day and the co-worker was talking on the phone and I, I heard him say, he died when? <laughs> One of our former co-workers passed on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really comes full circle when you realize that the individual they talk about is just a year younger or a year older than you are. And if it doesn't make you think about your own. Yeah. I also was talking with uh, an individual and they was talking about uh, their loved one going to the hospital and they say that uh, at the emergency room they was told, the doctors told them say, well, oh, Miss Dickens, don't worry. Say, your husband, he's, he's fine. He's going home. Say, say, it's the young ones. It's the young, the ones 50 and under that comes to the hot emergency room and don't leave. Yes. You, know, you know, you think it's the elderly that's leaving here? Yes, there's a lot of elderly Amen. that are leaving Amen. because there's a, the elderly population is, is huge. Amen. But there's a lot of young people yes. that are leaving this world. Yes. And it's a reminder that our time is short. Amen. For the word is saying the man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So we ought to appreciate every moment, every minute of our lives. I was listening to a news clip the other day. And Michael Strahan was doing an interview with uh, uh, Alex Trebek. And Alex Trebek said that he come to accept that life, his life is now closed ended. He said his life used to be open ended. But I disagree with him. From the day that he was born, from the day that we all are born, our lives is closed ended. We have plenty of things that we opportunities that we can do in life. But from the day that we are born, we are one day closer to death. Amen. Whether you have been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, or whether you have uh, uh, lung cancer, or whether you have heart disease, or whether you are, as they say, as heavy as a horse, your life is closed in. For it was pointed till man wants to die. And then the judgment. So we must prepare ourselves. And in that preparation, we ought to say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Amen. What are you saying? Preacher, sure I'm just saying that we ought to thank God for another day. Amen. And no matter what your situation may be, 
Whether you have high blood, low blood, whether you have a, a arthritis or whether you have a high blood pressure, whether you may have diabetes, whatever you may have, we're all in God's hands. Amen. Is that right, Sister Audrey? We're still in God's hands. And we ought to thank God for another day. Amen. Because the air we breathe belong to Him. Amen. The choir is going to give us a selection of their shorts. After the choir has sung, we ask that Mother Johnson will share with us the names of the sick and shut in. And as the choir sings, <coughs> we invite that you will come around the altar. And we're going to pray together. Those that desire to be anointed with oil, if you raise your hand, Dr. Knight or Minister Howard will anoint you with oil. But we are going to focus upon what God has done and what God already is doing in our lives. We would like to also just say that Mother Naomi Jenkins is in Adam's Farm uh, Rehabilitation in Greensboro, North Carolina. And those of you that would like to ask her, she may see me. Uh, and I will make sure that you get it. Amen. 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 Let us stand. Just when we needed you most, Lord, you stepped in right on time. 
Father, I know sometimes the way gets dark and dreary, and we can't see our way. But Lord, we are so thankful, dear Lord, that we know, dear Lord, that your word is a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our pathway. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you Lord. We thank you, Lord, because when, dear Lord, we didn't know better, dear Lord, <coughs> you protected us. Yes. We thank you, Lord, because when we couldn't, when we couldn't see our way straight, Lord, you guided us along the way. Yes. We thank you, Lord, because when our strength got weak, Lord, you picked us up and put us on your back. And Lord, we say thank you for that right now. We thank you, Lord. Lord, Lord, that we are weak, yes. but thou art mighty. Yes. So, Lord, just when we need it, you know. Yes. You stepped in right on time. Yes. So, Lord, right now, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you, dear Lord. Because three and a half months ago, dear Lord, you stepped in right on time. Yes. I thank you, Lord, because today, dear Lord, Father, if you look at her, dear Lord, you don't know what she's been through. So, Father God, what she looks like is not what she's been through. But, Lord, just when she needed the most, Lord, you stepped in right on time. Lord, and I know, dear Lord, that neither my wife but I have been so good, dear Lord. Amen. That, Father, that we are the only one, dear Lord, that you stepped in right on time. Amen. So, Lord, as I look around this body, this congregation, Lord, I thank you for the brothers and sisters, dear Lord. Father, that they don't look like what they've been through. But, Lord, you have been by their side. And, Lord, we say thank you for another day. Thank you, Lord, for healing the body. He'll place no more upon us upon that which we are able to bear. Amen. So, Lord, no matter what we're going through, He's right by our side. Yes, so, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you Father, I lift up every sick. Yes. I lift up every disease. Yes. Father, from a common cold yes. to cancer. Yes. To AIDS. Yes. Whatever that situation may be, dear yes. Lord. You are here. Yes. And Lord, we just present them before you right yes. now. Thank Say, you. Lord, make a way, make a way, Lord. Yes. Father, I thank you, dear Lord. Yes. For how you just continue yes. to protect us. Yes. Father, with wars and rumors of wars all across the land. Yes. Not knowing what the future may hold. Lord, I'm so thankful, dear Lord, I know who holds the future. Yes. For the earth is the Lord, yes. and the fullness thereof. Thank you. The world is they that dwell therein. Yes. So, Father, I just thank you, dear Lord, yes. for just when we need you most, Lord, yes. you'll step in right on time. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for waking me this morning. Thank you, thank you Lord, for clothing us in our thank right mind. I thank you, Lord, for sending rain in these yes. season. I thank you for the sunshine. Yes. I thank you for the wind. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for the Father God, I do realize, dear Lord, that all things work together to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So, Lord, right now, Lord, I say, Father, have your way. Father God, use us right now. Touch your Lord. Touch your deacons. Touch your ministry. Touch your servants. Touch those under the sound of my voice. Father God, that we will receive your word today. And Father God, as we depart from this house of worship, Father, we will go into the highways, the byways, yes. telling dying men and women that Jesus is Savior of the world. Yes. Yes. And just when you need him, he'll be there right on time. Yes. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, and we lift up our youth, Lord. Yes, sir. We thank you, dear Lord, for the youngest in the building today. Yes. We thank you, dear Lord, for the elders. Yes. 
Father, for we know, dear Lord, you wash over the young and you wash yes. over the old. Yes. Father God, and we're so glad, dear Lord, dear Lord, that if your eye truly is on the sparrow, yes. Lord, you wash us over us yes. too. Yes. So, Lord, we just want to give you the glory, yes. the honor, and the praise. Yes. And, Father, we thank you, thank you for the year of 2020. Yes. We thank you for a new year. Yes. And we ask, Lord, that that would just help us, dear Lord, to grow stronger. Yes. And to be about our Jesus, Father's business. Jesus. In Jesus' name we Jesus. pray. Amen. 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 God is, God is, God is. 
for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angels before he was conceived in the womb. <coughs> Verse 30, <coughs> For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Pray with me. Gracious Father, we thank you again for all that you have allowed us to experience thus far on this day. We thank you for the choir, for singing. We thank you for the prayers that have been prayed, the scriptures that have read. We thank you for just the spirit of fellowship this day. Now, Lord, as we embark upon the word, Lord, we acknowledge the Lord that we are not able in ourselves. But, Father, I do ask that thou would send the preacher, the Holy Spirit, one more time, dear Lord, and may use me as a vessel, dear Lord. Use my tongue to preach your word. Use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Let that same spirit abide with these, your children, that someone may profess Jesus as Lord of their life. This we do pray and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 32 says, A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people <coughs> Israel. We Oppose the concerted effort this year as we look at 2020. We talk about the fact that 2020 is also the autonomous perfect vision. 2020, when you have 2020 vision, you have perfect vision. So this year of 2020, we want to try to do better. None of us are perfect, but we want to, we ought to strive as Matthew 5 and 48 says, be ye therefore perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And mediocrity is no longer should be acceptable. We should not just accept the fact that, you know, I'm not perfect, this is all that you're going to get, but we ought to strive to do a little better. If we don't strive to be better, we won't get better. Yeah. You know, if you are satisfied with where you are and that's where all you're going to do, you won't move any further. But 2020 is, should be for us a new vision, a light to lighten the way. The subject for today, a light to lighten the way. On this course of 2020, within our new vision, within us trying to improve ourselves, we need to understand why God sent His only begotten Son. We need to understand why He did it for us. If you just look over your life, <coughs> think about the things that you have done. Now, I know it's very easy for you to look across the aisle and think about what your neighbor has done, but forget about your neighbor's behavior for a moment. And notice that I said, forget about your neighbor's behavior. I didn't say forget about your neighbor. Because I've been, I've, I've, I've been, I've been called a few times in the past month, and I, I got I to be careful of the things that I say. I was, a few months, a month or so ago, I was preaching a, a message and I say that, I use this phrase here, I say, you can cuss or you can fuss and it won't change the, it won't change the reality. Someone called me and told me, say, say, Pastor, I just want to let you know that my, that my child said that the preacher said that you can cuss. <laughs> I say, nah, all right, I got to straighten that out. That's not what I meant. I didn't mean you could cuss. 
but I was trying to illustrate something here. So I don't want you to forget about your neighbor, but just for this moment, don't focus on their actions and their behavior. But think about yourself. Think about where you come from. Think about the things that you have done in life. How we all have fallen short. We haven't crossed every T, nor have we dotted every I. But yet, when you think about the fact that God loves me, yes, He loves you. The scriptures say it this way that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And you are in the world, I'm in the world. We are part of this world. And God loves us. And he sent his son. Just a week or so ago, we celebrated Christmas. We celebrated Christmas as the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He sent his son. The son came down through 42 generations. And he was born of a virgin birth. Mary was his mother. And Joseph was called his earthly father. But a lot of things had to take place to get Jesus where the prophets said that he would be. This is why Matthew lays the groundwork and foundation for how that Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. Because Bethlehem is where the Savior was to be born. And there, not only in Bethlehem, but he was born in a manger. Because the scripture says that there was no room for him and for them. In the end, there was no Marriott, no Sheraton, no other fine hotel in the area, but he was laid in a manger. But think about this for a second. If the innkeepers had known home was about to be born in Bethlehem, Any of you remember growing up, you know, we all, particularly the younger ones of us, that had their older siblings or maybe an aunt or an uncle that lived out of town. And whenever they came in, we had to give up our bed and they had, they moved into our bed and we had to sleep sometime on the couch, on the floor, wherever, wherever our parents told us to sleep. And my wife used the word, uh, I said, I had hurry, hurry, must a pallet, making a pallet on the floor. You were kicked out of your bed. If the innkeeper had known who was about to be born, somebody would have came up short. But it was not meant for Jesus to be born in luxury. Yes. It was meant for him to be born in a lowly manner. Because if he had been born in luxury, then the poor would have felt that he had no part. Yes. But because he came in a lowly manner, mm -hmm. even those without can understand and relate to him. <coughs> he was born in a lowly man. Yes. The shepherds were the one that the announcement was given to that unto you is born this day in the city of David yes. a Savior yes. which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes yes. and lying in a man. The angel said let us go. See this great thing that's come to pass. Yes. They go and they find Mary and Joseph. They find them in the manger. Yes. 
just as the angel has said. Well, our scripture today picks up and it says that when eight days were accomplished, after eight days, Jesus was circumcised. And he was called, his name was called Jesus. This is what the angel had told Mary and this is what was taking place. He was circumcised on the eighth day. And being circumcised, it was fulfilling the commandments of the Jewish law. For Leviticus 12 and 2 says, Speak to the people of Israel, says, If a woman bears, conceives and bears a male child, he shall be, she shall be ceremoniously unclean seven days. As at that time of her ministration, she shall be unclean. On the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So the law was being fulfilled. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but it came to fulfill. So eight days, Jesus is circumcised. You know, it's an amazing thing. Sometimes we think because we have been given certain rights and afforded certain opportunities, we think that we can skirt around everything else that's set in place. We think we can do things our way. But, you know, God has a plan. And unless God tells us to do things a different way, we need to stick to God's plan. Because when we go outside of God's plan, that's when we mess up. How I many of you have ever messed up before? Amen. 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 And I, I mess up every time I go outside of the word of God. Amen. But when I walk with God, people try to make me feel like I'm, I'm doing wrong, but God strengthens me. Amen. He comes to you and just like he did with Jesus there in the, in the wilderness, the angels came and ministered yes. to Jesus. Yes. So you don't have to worry about what people say. You just keep walking with God. Amen. And they they they. The 27th verse says that, and when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. <coughs> now, notice something here. See, in our perfect vision, in our perfect vision, in our understanding of a few things, we, we need to, we need to dig, dig deeper into the word of God and we need to understand a few things. See, a lot of times, I'm sure that you've grown around and you say those all those nice nobility things and everything that's out there. You, you see the you see the the, the shepherds, you've seen the 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 sheep, you've seen the goats, you've seen the wise men all around that stable. Amen. You know, that's a lot of things that happened before that the wise men got there. Amen. That's a lot of things that took Amen. place. And even even in this passage of scripture right here, before they even got to the temple, there's a lot of things that happened. Mm -hmm. See, number one, he was born in Bethlehem. Yes. But he had to go to Jerusalem. Yes. He had to go to the temple. And it wasn't like they do you today. Uh, you know, it used to be when, when a lady had a child and they kept her in the hospital maybe three days. Now you have a baby today, they want to keep you out. If you have a baby at 6 in the morning, they want you out by 6 p.m. <laughs> but they, her days of purification had to be accomplished before she could get to Jerusalem. So he was circumcised on the eighth day. But you need to understand that it was 30 some days before she got to Jerusalem. Yes. And depending upon how you want to count it, it was either 33 days or 41 days before she got to Jerusalem. And when they got to Jerusalem for him to be presented before the Lord, Verse 23 says, 
as it is written, the law of the Lord, every male that opened the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. So they had to go and concentrate. The male, firstborn male, had to be con concentrated. And uh, because all of the firstborn that opened the womb of every Israelite, whether it was human or animals, were had to be concentrated to the Lord. And because they were to be called holy. So whether it was human or whether it was animal, it belonged to the Lord. So this was a responsibility. Amen. Now I understand this. It, it, it's, it's amazing that they had to do this because it was God's son. <laughs> but yet the law had to be fulfilled. We can't go around doing things any way we want to just because we want to do it that way. All right now. We've got to adhere to the principles yes. of God's yes. word. Yes. Right. So here we are. They bring in, verse 24 says, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. That 24th verse there, if any of you had any doubts before as to the economical status of Mary and Joseph, or Joseph and Mary, whichever one you want to put first, verse 23 puts it in right. They was poor. How you know, preacher? Well, Leviticus 12 and 8 says, oh, well, actually, verse 7, back up in verse 7, says that you should bring a lamb. Mm -hmm. You should bring a lamb because, you know, ceremoniously unclean and you need to bring a lamb for your sin offering. But it says, verse 8 says, but if she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves, two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other one for a sin offering. In this way, the priest would make atonement for her, and she would be clean. Amen. See, if she had been rich, she would have brought a lamb, mm -hmm. a turtle dove, yes. and a pig. Yes. But because she was poor, yes. again, the scripture is showing that we can relate. See, a lot of times we read that, and we don't <coughs> look at it. There's a significance to the word of God. And we have to understand the history to understand the significance. Verse 25 says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. And the same man was just and devout. And he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. This man was waiting for the help that the Lord has been promising for generations and he's been waiting and he's been there he's been waiting the scriptures say he was just he was devout but yet he was still a sinner because the word of God said we all are sinners yes, yes, yes. and he was waiting for the help my help is coming yes. the Holy Ghost was upon him and then when Mary and Joseph came it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he could see the Lord's Christ. Yes. You know, that's a wonderful thing when God gives you a word. Yes. Yes. When God speaks. It, 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 okay. I, I imagine there's been times when his body probably got weak. Felt like he was almost at the door of death sometime. But he gained comfort in knowing that the word of God said, I shouldn't die till I should see. The consolation of Israel. Till I should see the glory. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we trusted God at his word? When God tells us that he's going to bring us through something, when God tells us that he would never leave us nor forsake us, when God said that I'm with you all the way, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just trust him that much? 
to know that he is there. No matter what's going on in Washington, wouldn't it be wonderful if we just remember that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and the world that dwells therein? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we just realized I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which comes my help, my help cometh for the Lord, which made heaven and earth? Wouldn't it be really good to just to know that God is with us and we can just trust in him? You wake up in the morning time, you, you turn the TV on, the morning shows are talking about everything that happened overnight, and it looks like we may be headed to war, it looks like we may already be in war, it looks like we're in distress, it looks like the world is fainting all around us, but we ought to say, Lord, I'm so thankful that I'm still in your care. Turn on the television, there's another church shooting here, church shooting there, school shooting here, school shooting there. We ought to be able to say, Lord, I'm so thankful that I'm in your care. Verse 27 saying, and he came by the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child of Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, he took him up in his arm and blessed God. Is this a wonderful? He's already know that this is the consolation of Israel. He already know that this is the help of Israel. But he still has to bless God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He could have thanked God for so many things. I, I imagine he probably thanked him for life, health, and strength. He might have thanked him for another day. He might have thanked him just for being able to hold this child. But I know one thing that he had to say. Lord, I thank you that you allowed me to see this glorious day. For you have allowed your son, Jesus the Christ, to be here and now, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. He thanked him so much. Verse 29 say, now I can go. Now, Lord, let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. I know it's that now. He still, still say according to thy word. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, 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 I've seen what you have promised, Lord. If I died right now, I'm good, Lord. But let it be according to your word. You don't have to take me just yet. But let it be according to your word. Let me live the life that you want me to live. I remember years ago, when one of my instructors, uh, he was telling, telling about the choir. They were singing this song, Angels, Angels, Get My Mansion Ready. <coughs> he said the choir was singing so hard that, that day everybody was up shouting. He stood up to preach. He said, well, y'all sound like y'all ready to go right now. He said, but I want the Lord just to let me stay here a little bit longer. As long as the Lord allows us to say we're going to work with the Lord. But if the Lord shall call me right now, if the Lord should call you right now, are you ready? Can you answer that question right now? Are you ready? I know many people say, Lord, I'm not ready because I'm not right. The truth of the reality, the reality of it all is none of us are right. None of us are right. But it's Jesus that justifies us. This is the reason why we need to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior because he said for my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people Thou have prepared him before the face and the sight of all people. And this is where our text today, this is where our text today really takes hold today. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Even in this year of 2020, even in this year of new vision, I want to let you know right now that you need to have some light along your way. Because even church of a living God, see I wear glasses upon my faces because my vision is it's not 2020. If I take my glasses off, I can't see things as well as I used to at the age of 20. I can't see as clearly as I used to. Glasses help aid my eyes right now that I can see things a little clearer. The Word of God helps aid you right now. But let me tell you,
praying is something, church of a living God. I wish it was really that this message was at nighttime because I would have the ushers to turn the light off. Because no matter whether you have 20, 20, 10, 20, or 20, 30, if you don't have light, this is why. This is why Simon said, a light to lighten the Gentile. If we got light, we can see. And let me tell you, Jesus is the light of the world. In this year of 2020, when we are trying to improve ourselves, when we're trying to do better, we need to get the light of Jesus in our life. Yes. We ought to let Jesus lead us and guide us along the way. If we need more love, we need to walk with Jesus. Yes. We need to read the word of God. For the word of God is going to improve our vision. Yes. But in all keeping with our vision, we got to have light all around. Yes. And let me tell you, church of a living God, a light that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Yes. And if we let Jesus lead our life, if we get him on the inside, he'll be that thing on the inside that works on the outside, that brings about a change in our life. Church of a living God, Jesus, Mary had to take a, a two turtle doves and two pigeons down to Jerusalem for the cleansing of her body. But I'm so glad that Joseph and Mary Although they was poor, yes. they couldn't afford a lamb. Mm -hmm. Mary had the lamb of God yes. in her arms. I'm so glad that the lamb of God yes. walked upon the face of this earth for 33 and a half years. I'm so glad that the lamb of God uh, walked and he healed the sick, yes. gave sight to the blind, yes. made the lame to walk, yes. the mute to talk, yes. the lamb of God. Yes. Raised Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. The Lamb of God. When they walked upon him, they Joe uh, Judas placed a kiss upon his sheep. Yeah. The Lamb of God yeah. was took down to the courtroom. Yeah. And he stood in Pilate's Hall, yeah. in Judgment Hall. They found him guilty, not of any sin, not of any crime, but guilty of being the Son of God. And they took him to Calvary's cross. They nailed him to the cross. He hung high. They stretched him wide and hung him high. He hung for your sins. He hung for my sins. He died for your sins. He died for my sins. The one who couldn't afford to a lamb. We only could afford two turtle doves and two, 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 two uh, pigeons. But church of a living God, he became my lamb, the lamb of God. He became my lamb. He died for me. He died for you. He took the sins of the whole world for our lives. And the question for you today is, will you continue to walk? As if you do not know Christ. Or will you seek to know him? For he's the light. That lightens the world. He's the glory of God. 2020. If we want to have a new vision. If we want to have perfect vision. We got to get the light. We got to walk with the Lord. We got to get to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. God has said to us his only begotten son. And the son accepted the mission. And he died on the cross. For your sin. And my sin. And we need to quit arguing. About this. Or arguing about that. But we need to say Lord I thank you. That you gave your son. We talk about how the world is lost. Are we truly the light that the world can see? Are we walking in the newness of life? Are we walking in the light? Do men and women see something in our lives that make them want to change their lives? The whole world around us 
They're going about their own business, doing the things that they want to do. You know, it, it kind of bothers me. It kind of bothers me in society, really. You know, we have to be acceptable of everything else in the world. But when we start talking about Jesus Christ, they want to shut us down. Amen. Amen. Now, why is it we have to be acceptable of everything else? But they want to hush us up. You know why they want to hush us up? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. See, Jesus is a way maker. Jesus changes the world. And if you want to bring about a change in your life, let Jesus in. 2020, new vision. A light to lighten the way. Yes. Will you let him in? Amen. Will you let Jesus in today? Amen. Will you share Jesus with a neighbor, with a friend? Don't try to force it upon him. Just share. Yes. Just share. Yes. You know, some people may not be able to take it today. But if you continue to live the life day in and day out, yes. one day you may make an impression upon him. Amen. Amen. Because they say, you know, they're the same every time I see them. They never, they never get too bent out of shape. You know, if somebody say you never get angry, they don't see you all the time. Because I believe some of us get angry sometimes. I tell you before that, I always tell you that anger is a good emotion. If you, you know, if you don't get angry sometimes, something, something's wrong. Jesus even got angry. But when you have the love of God, it shows in your walk. It shows in good talk. The choir is going to give us a selection of their shorts. And we do extend the invitation to someone today, those who do not know Jesus in the part of your sin. I didn't start the year off with a shouting message today. I started the year off with an informative message to make you think about the Word of God. Because we have got to do better. And in order for us to do better, we need to understand the Word of God. Come on, choir. Invitation is extended to those who do not want Jesus in the heart of your sin. Or maybe there's one who would like to accept Him as Lord and Savior. You may come by water baptism. Or maybe you would nice, like to unite with this church. You may call and make your request known. Let us stand.
God.